Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, it's my first Sunday morning back uh, here at EBC and haven't yet seen too many of you. So uh, I trust you're doing well. Trust the year's shaping up for you. Uh, for those of you whose lives revolve around the school term, the tsunami is coming. Uh, we are two weeks out. Uh, my twins are in kindy, so we've got some big transitions, thankfully. Uh, some big... <laughs> Some big transitions coming and we're looking forward to it. And uh, my wife just happened to land an extra job. Uh, so uh, literally God just provided uh, some extra work for her. Happens to be at the coffee shop across the road. So um, now it might be an answer to prayer uh, that free coffee comes. So it might, be, it might be the best year that I've ever had or the most caffeinated, who knows. It's, uh, if you do get bored this morning, like Dale said, my apologies. Uh, we, uh, there is a colouring table at the back, feel free to do some adult colouring, but uh, it's going to be good, we're going to have a good time uh, this morning. So uh, Dale said we've been in the passage for the last two weeks, and I haven't been here to uh, hear Dale or Jean kind of set up the passage, so I'm sure they've done a much better job than me, but we are going to kind of take it at a little bit of a different angle this morning, so uh, I, trust, uh, I trust you'll find it entertaining as a young person, but also there's something in here as we open God's word for all of us, no matter what our age, young or old. So we're going to remind ourselves firstly of uh, God's word and the passage and how awesome God is. So I'm going to invite you to stand with me uh, just briefly as we read God's word together this morning. And uh, we'll be reading Luke 10 verses 1 to 9. I'll be reading from the NIV. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road, it's a bit rude. But when you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome to eat what is offered to you, heal the sick and who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is God's word. You may be seated. I want to briefly kind of pick apart this passage this morning uh, using the modern generation's hieroglyphics, uh, which many of you would know are called emojis. And I would, I'm not a great user of emojis. Uh, I would prefer to use GIFs, which are kind of funnier and some a little bit more extended. Uh, but we're going to use emojis this morning, and I'm going to need some of your help because I just need to know if you're awake this morning. So this is the first one we're going to use. And uh, so I want everyone just to like, like shift their glasses, their sunnies a bit, and just go, cool. Everyone, everyone do that with me? Everyone say, cool. Cool. Wow. Pretty cool punch. Uh, the, next, uh, the next one we're going to look, do is going to like, like uh, nah. Now, everyone say, nah. Thumbs down. Shake your head. Come on, there's some heads still standing still. No, nah, everyone's shaking their God, man, you guys. All right. The next one we're going to do is, uh, huh? Everyone go, huh? Yeah, there you go. You're a bit more awake now. It's good. Huh? And uh, at any time during the service, if you just want to go, huh? Uh, that's perfectly fine. All right? We'll, we'll roll with it. But we're going we're gonna to unpack this uh, through the lens of cool, nah, and huh? And we'll see how we go. All right. The first thing uh, Luke does is he opens uh, the passage, Luke chapter 10, and he says, after this, and it's Jesus kind of rallying his 72, there was possibly more, and he was sending them out in teams, two by two. And uh, this, is, this would have been an incredibly exciting opportunity for them. And uh, a lot has been spoken about how, you know, the, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out more workers. Alan loves that passage. If you scratch him, he bleeds it. Uh, you know, this is, this is the classic missionary passage. But what's exciting for me and for a young person, what's cool about this is that Jesus is sending out people. Now, I'm sure Dale and Jean have said the context really well for you, but there's something uh, in the context I just want to point out, and is that Luke chapter 10 comes straight after Luke chapter 9, and there's lots of really cool things in Luke chapter 9. 
Because at the start of Luke 9, Jesus sends out 12. And now at the start of Luke chapter 10, he starts with after this, which personally I think is a word bridge to the start of Luke chapter 9. So he sends out the 12 and now he sends out the 72. What's cool about this is that Jesus has this discipleship incubator happening. And it's very, very intentional. It's not by chance that Jesus is sending people out. Because what's cool for a young person is that Jesus is highly invitational. Like Jesus gathers people to himself. Jesus didn't start with anybody. He just started with himself. And he he walked up to fishermen who were possibly teenagers and said, come follow me. And it, and it says they immediately left what they had and they followed. And Jesus, Jesus was gathering people around him, highly invitational. And, and, and young people need to be reminded that Jesus loves them, invites people to them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, for the kingdom of God is for who? It's for the kids. It's for young people. But the, but the kingdom of God isn't just invitational. It comes with challenge. And later we're going to look, you know, go, go and go without shoes and go without money and backpacks and like go with nothing essentially and, and don't even talk to people on the road and, and see what happens. Like there, there's, there's, this, there's this incubator where Jesus is intentionally gathering people to himself and challenging them towards a life of faith. And for a young person, this is cool because young people are keen to get involved. They're keen to have a go at something. Uh, and this is, a, this is almost a universal, like, young person kind of trait. I mean, if you've been a young person, you've been keen to try something and have a go at something. Uh, decades ago, decades ago, uh, I remember I was in church and um, my, our pastor said, look, we're short of bass players. Can, can anyone play the bass? We would love just to expand the roster and have some more bass players. And I'm, I'm like, sure, I can play guitar. Bass isn't that hard. It's only the top four strings, you know? Like, and if you're a bass player, you're like, yeah classic guitarist um i can play bass so i went to the pastor and i said look i can i play guitar i'm I'm, I'm pretty good um and and i I can play bass i can help you out and and as politely as he could he said no (laughs) i was i was devastated young people are keen to have a go they're keen to have especially when they're invited in and then let loose which is what jesus is doing this is pretty cool to a young person. This is good news. Because I don't want to spend too much time on it, but when you think about the way our Western system is structured, it's not necessarily structured to oppress young people, but it does suppress them somewhat. We do suppress young, we send them off to school, we tell them, you know, go, go earn your stripes, get your education, you know, and, and when you're 18, which is kind of the rite of passage, even then, they're not really that respected at 18. And it's like, you can do a few things, but that's about it. You know, when you get to a certain age, then we'll start taking you seriously. Then you can be a serious contributor to society. And guys, that's not the kingdom that Jesus is building. Jesus is building a kingdom where young people are valued and included. Uh, like, even our church constitution, I know that I'm not beating up our constitution, but it says legally there's some requirements. But our young people can't become members of our church until they get to 18. And I get the legal requirements on that. But what does that say to our young people about the kind of people we are, the kind of church community that we are? This is not the kingdom Jesus is building. There's other ways I know young people get involved and, 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 and like our church values young people. So don't hear me beat up the constitution or don't hear me beat up the church. But as a culture, as a Western society, we tend to suppress young people where Jesus is letting young people loose. And that is cool to a young person. The next thing uh, Jesus says in verse 3 is, Go, I am sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. And this is like... Nah, nah, that's, that's, uh, I don't know how you read this, but you know, at the end where it says, you know, when you go to the town and tell them the kingdom of God has come near. And you're like, um, Jesus, you, you lost me at wolves. Uh, you, you're like, Can we just go back to the wolves bit? Can we just unpack that a little bit? Uh, I don't know if you've been around uh, young people too much, but young people are, are risk takers. Uh, and they, love, they actually love a good challenge that's put before them. 
And most of the time, we're trying to protect our young people from harm. We're trying to put helmets on their head when they go motorbike riding or downhill riding, which is good. You know, you've got to risk manage these things. Uh, but young people will do thing, crazy things, like they'll ride across town. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do things that parents are horrified by. Uh, my kids are just getting to that point. Uh, although even young people will climb to various heights. Uh, but young people love to take risks and there's something in the kingdom of God that is inviting young people to a risky lifestyle. Uh, but, but it's not risk. I, I mean, I don't know how you read this, but I, I can imagine this environment where Jesus is sending out the 72 and it's almost like, an after, it's almost like a, a statement that, that doesn't even cause much fear or trepidation. I'm sending you out like lambs amongst wolves. I don't even think they were scared by this, to be honest. And, and for a couple of reasons. For one, Jesus had already modeled this for them. I mean, they'd spent time with Jesus. They knew his teaching. They'd, saw, they'd seen his love and compassion for people. And they'd also witnessed the miracles that he'd done. He'd healed the sick. He'd opened the eyes of the blind. He'd uh, raised the dead at some point, And they were witnesses to this. They'd seen Jesus model this for them. And then just the chapter before, they'd seen the 12 live this out. So Jesus sends out the 12 and he gives the 12 at the start of chapter 9, 12 to cast out demons and heal the sick and do amazing miracles and, and take the good news with them. And so they'd, they'd, they'd seen Jesus model it and they'd seen the 12 live it out. And now Jesus says, guys, it's your turn. I think they were excited by it. I think the, the, the punchline here would have been the wolves don't stand a chance. That's how a young person will look at it, when it's been modelled so well for them, when it's been taught so clearly to them, when it's been demonstrated, when they've seen people who go before them and who live it out and come back and report with confidence all that God has done. And guys, this is a challenge to us because young people want to step into the, 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 the work of God. There's an invitation to be a part of all that God is doing. But young people need people who have gone before, who have lived it out, who model it for them, who can come back and say with confidence and tell stories about all that God has done as I've lived with faith. And, and to be honest, as a parent, this is the hardest part about parenting. While I'm trying to protect my kids and raise them up and, and give them uh, like a life where I'm trying to pass on faith, it, like, it, it, sometimes I'm trying to take the risk out of it. Sometimes I'm trying to take this, 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 the too much safety in there for them. And, uh, and modeling it over and over again consistently, the faithfulness of God in my life to my kids is probably the hardest thing. Wolves don't stand a chance. That's how I think young people would see that. Take risks, step out, see what God does. The last one is is kind of a, not a confusing part, but there's mystery in this next part. Like, living by faith has an air of mystery about it. Uh, I mean, when was the last time you gave more than you could afford to give, trusting that God was going to look after you, God was going to provide for your family? There's, there's, a, there's a bit of a, like, a huh, going on in this last bit. Don't take a sandals, don't, take, like, don't talk to people on the road, which, which we would think and probably they would think would be quite rude. Uh, don't be distracted, you know, enter a house, there's this, there's this peace that you carry and there's somehow you can transfer this peace to somebody else. Uh, I hope the other guys have unpacked this because we're not going to unpack it today. But there's, 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 this, there's this mystery about it. But at the very end, there's this, the message is clear. The message you carry is the kingdom of God has come near. And this is like, this is good news to a young person. Well, well I mean, young people embrace mystery, believe it or not. They, 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 they like it when all the answers aren't necessarily clear and they've got the freedom to step into some, a lack of clarity. But what, what is bigger than this is a, a motivation to a cause. There's an invitation that Jesus has to, to come be a part of my redemptive plan for the world, which is a massive story. God's redemptive story for all mankind, for all humanity, is, is the, the bringing back of everything to himself, to restore it, to redeem it, to make it new, to make it right. And we get to be a part of it. Young people get to be a part of it. They get to be unleashed into the mission of God, which is a pretty cool thing. And it comes with some risk. 
And it comes with a story that is way beyond ourselves, uh, which, is, which is what young people are looking for. The brands that sell things the best to young people don't sell a great T-shirt, they sell a story. They sell a story. If you look on social media, one of the, one of the, the key features uh, they've added to social media in the last couple of years is the story. So it, it's not really a post that lasts a long time, it's just a glimpse into your story that you can share with people for about 24 hour window. And you post it and it disappears. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's this, there's this impetus, there's this drive towards story. And the story that God tells, the story that God is inviting us into is, is far beyond, is bigger than anybody else's story. And young people are, are kind of setting sucked into it. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. And guys, uh, I don't know if you've sat through uh, a movie uh, and the story has just been terrible. Like, you've, have you been to a movie and you've wanted to walk out? And it's like, I mean, what a waste of money. And it's worse when you spend a free ticket on a bad movie. And you're like, God, I've wasted a free ticket. Uh, but uh, we all love stories. And, and there's nothing worse than a badly told story or an incomplete story. So I was reading um, a, uh, one of the um, Lost Sheep books with my kids. And, and somebody, I won't name uh, Zoe, uh, who, who accidentally ripped the last two pages out of the book. And we're reading the story and we get to a point... And the story, and the story kind of suddenly ends. <laughs> it's like, well, like, like this, something's not right here. It's like, this is, this is the worst story ever. And, uh, and they know that there's more to the story. Anyway, there's, there's, guys, there's, there's something about the story of God that is so full and so complete and so big that when a young person gets a glimpse of it, uh, it is so attractive. Uh, it... I don't even think, really, I don't think we should finish here in verse 9. For a young person, like if you're sitting in a cinema, you want to wait till the very end of the story. Like verse 9 is not the end of this story. And for a young person, if all I ever told you was that Jesus sent out the 72 and he gave them some challenge and he told them to live by faith, if that was the end of the story, it would be, it would be a little bit dissatisfying because there'd be, there'd be a sense here that there's something missing in the story that this isn't finished yet, and it's not finished, because later, and I don't, forgive me, Dale, for taking liberty here, but later in Luke chapter 9, the 72 come back. The 72 come back, and, and it says in verse 17, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Guys, like, if all we ever give our young people is information or just challenge, uh, if all we ever do is pass on, you know, that Jesus loves you, you know, God's got a big story. If it doesn't come with the power, there's something missing. Now, I'm not going to get all Pentecostal on you or get all crazy and freaky and stuff, but, but there's something that comes with the message of God and the power of God, and in, in unison, they, they work together. Because a young person doesn't need just to know about God, they need to experience God. They need to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in their life, firstly, to change their life, and then to change the lives around them. And, and it's not such a scary thing, guys, if you have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you've said yes to Jesus at times when, when, when life is dark, if you've said yes to Jesus when you prayed for miracles, dared to pray for a miracle, who knows what could happen? It's not such a scary jump for our young people when we pass on our faith to them if it first lives in us, if the power of the Spirit is changing and shaping us. Because young people are leaving the church, not because the story is, is bad, not because the story is, 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 is wrong, but it's just lived out in an incomplete way for them. It, it, there's a, Paul refers to it later, this idea that people will hold to a form of godliness but deny its power. And please, don't hear me judge you. Don't, this isn't condemnation, this is encouragement to you. Because just while God is calling young people into his kingdom, he's calling all of us. Today, 
God invites you to step into his kingdom to experience both the love of God and the power of God. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is at work in us, forming us, shaping us. And if young people see your life transformed, guess what? They're going to do the same thing. They're going to go, I want my life changed like that. I want that love. I want that compassion. I want that confidence. I want that assurance. Because young people will go through the valley of the shadow of death. They will face difficult times and sheltering them is not helping it and, and only giving them information is, is only part of the story. We need to live into the challenge that Jesus brings to go, experiencing the power that Jesus gives us through the Spirit, which is life-changing, and then we need to tell the story. We need to tell the stories and we need to live it. Guys, this passage, and look, I haven't, uh, I, I'd be a hopeless missionary because I've skimmed right over the missionary passages. Uh, but, but guys, it's not, it's not rocket science. Like, we're not from NASA. We're just, we're just following a God who loves us, who's looking for people who have surrendered to him to go to Africa, to go to Asia, to go to their next door neighbor, to go to their workmate, to go to their universities, their schools, you know, their coffee shops. And to live before ordinary people, as ordinary people, the power of the Spirit of God at work in us. And this is the call Jesus has. And I think this, this passage, and I think most passages, are exciting and encouraging and, and shaping and challenging and engaging for young people. But what they want to see is they want to see it lived out. They need to see it modelled for them, just like the 72. It was modelled by Jesus, it was lived out in the 12, and then they got to be a part of it. And we were, we're talking a lot about the sticky faith stuff and, and creating a space to pass on faith to young people, and buildings are important, and it'd be good to get the buildings done, to be honest. But guys, we don't need to invest millions of dollars today to start passing on our faith. It just needs to be lived out in us. And, and we, in our youth leadership team, we, we, we call that simply, just say yes to Jesus. Just say yes. When he calls you, when he sends you, when he puts that finger in your life and says, hey, we're going to deal with this now, you say yes. It's called obedience, surrender. The Bible calls it repentance. That's what we need. And that's what will get young people into the mission field, into their workplaces, into their schools, to, to be world changers to be risk takers, to, to be caught up in the mission and the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for uh, your grace and your mercy that is available to us, but also your power that is available to us. Uh, and firstly, Lord, we, we want to um, say sorry for the times where you've come to us and you've said, you know, we're going to work on this issue. And we've said, look, not right now or no. And we've, we've, we've not let your power take its full effect in us. And Lord, we're sorry for those moments. Uh, but Lord, we are uh, continually excited and given the chance to step into a, a, uh, your forgiveness, your restoration, but also your power again today to change us, to shape us, to see our faith be transmitted to young people as we live before them, a life of faith as we live before them, a life on mission in your kingdom as we tell stories about all that you're doing to change people's lives. Lord, we want this story to be the story of EBC because it's not our story, it's your story. It's your, your redemptive plan and we get to be a part of it. Young people get to be released into it. And so Lord, if there's spaces where we need to step back as old people, I, can, I put myself in that basket. Lord, give us the courage to let young people loose to give them the, 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 the risks, to give them the challenge, to let them loose in the world, that we might see your kingdom come through our young people. And so, Lord, we pray that you would raise up a generation in our community, in our faith community, that would love you passionately, that would, would lead us into new territory, that would, that would show us the way sometimes of, of how you're shaping communities around us. And Lord, this, this, we, we talk a lot about the next generation and how it's, 
how it's not this and it's not that and it's, and it's lazy and entitled. And, but, Lord, but Lord, we know that young people are loved by you, are called by you, are challenged by you. And so, Father, we pray, bring them in, raise them up and send them out. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen.